we were talking about row echelon form and reduced row echelon form. And we were talking about how we could use matrices to solve systems. And our idea was we want to take a matrix that they give us and we want to use the three elementary row operations that we learned. Switching two rows, multiplying a row by a constant, and multiplying a row by a constant and adding it to another row. We want to use those three things to transform the matrix they give us into row echelon form or reduced row echelon form. Why would I want to do that? All right, well, look at this first matrix right here, okay? Now, you got to remember, when we solve a system of three equations with three unknowns, that's where we're doing the whole combine equations one and two, get equation four. Combine equations two and three, get equation five. Combine equations four and five, get one value back, substitute all the way through. Like it takes half of a board to do one problem, right? So instead, if I get it into this row echelon form, what would the system be that goes with this augmented matrix? It would be 1x plus 2y minus z is equal to 4. No x plus 1y plus 0z is equal to 3, so y is equal to 3. And no x, no y, 1z is equal to negative 2. So I know z is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to 3. I can just plug both of those back into that first equation and find x and I'm done. There is no taking a half a sheet of paper, right? So you might decide that you like the elementary row operations better in transforming to row echelon form. We also said that if you're willing to go just a few more row operations to create reduced row echelon form, what is this system that goes with this augmented matrix? What's the first row? X equals 4. Y equals 3. Z equals negative 2. You are staring at your answer, right? So 4, 3, negative 2 would be our solution, okay? So now that we understand the reasoning behind this, we can use Gaussian elimination to solve a system of three equations with three unknowns, okay? So I'm going to take the system that they give me, and I'm going to write an augmented matrix for it. Now, remember we did that? In our previous lesson, that's where we just pulled out all the numbers, right? And we put zeros in for any missing terms. All right, so we want to try to get that augmented matrix to be in row echelon form. Because if it is, then all I have to do is back substitute to get to my answer. All right, so what's my goal? My goal is 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So if we look at ours, we've got the 1. We need this negative 1 right here to be a 0. So what do you add to negative 1 to get 0? Positive 1, right. Do you have a positive 1 that you could add to it? Well, yeah, in the row right above it, there's a positive 1, right? So if we add row 1 and row 2 and put it in row 2, that would give me the zero that I'm looking for. All right, so let's do that. Let's add row one with row two. So one and negative one would give us zero. Negative two and three would give us one. Three and zero would give us three. And nine and negative four would give us five. All right, so now let's check our progress. Now we've got one, zero, one. Now we need this 2 to be a 0. So we've got the 1, 0, 1. We're trying to get 0, 0, 1 in this last row. All right, so what do I need to add to 2 to make it 0? Negative 2. Mm -hmm. Do I have a negative 2? No. But I could make one. Because if I took this first row up here and I multiplied it by negative 2, then I could add it to my third row. So let's take that first row and let's multiply it by negative two, all right? So negative two times one is negative two. Negative two times negative two is four. Negative two times three is negative six. And negative two times nine 
is negative 18. And now we want to add that to row number 3. So let's come grab row number 3. 2, negative 5, 5, 17. 2, negative 5, 5, 17. Alright, so if we add those two together, negative 2 and 2, 0, mm -hmm, 4 and negative 5, negative 1, mm -hmm, negative 6 and 5, negative 1, and negative 18 and 17 gives us negative 1. Alright, so now let's check our progress. Remember, we're trying to get 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And what we've got is 1, 0, 1, 0. Now I need this negative 1 to be a 0. What do I need to add to negative 1 to get 0? Positive 1. Do I have a positive 1? Yeah, in row number 2, right? So I have a positive 1 right there in row number 2. So if I add row 2 and row 3, that would give me the zero that I'm looking for. All right, so let's do that. Let's add row two and row three. All right, so zero plus zero, not a trick question, zero, one and negative one, negative one, three and negative one, sorry, one and negative one was zero, sorry, three and negative one, two, mm -hmm, and five and negative one, four. All right, so let's check our progress. Now we've got 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. I just need that 2 right there to be a 1, and I'll be done. Now, to make zeros, you add the opposite. To make 1s, all you have to do is multiply by the reciprocal. So if I want to get a 1 right there, and I have 2, I would just multiply by the reciprocal. I'd multiply by one half because one half times two would give me one. All right, so that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So one half times row three. So half of zero is zero. Half of zero is zero. Half of two is one. There's that one we were looking for. And then half of four is two. So now we have that in row echelon form. If I found the system that went with that augmented matrix, it would be z is equal to 2, right? 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals 2. So z is equal to 2. Look at the second row. No x plus 1y plus 3z is equal to 5. So y plus 3z equals 5. And then the first row up there, 1x minus 2y plus 3z is equal to 9. So to solve, all I'd have to do is put 2 in for z. So y plus 6 equals 5 would give me y is negative 1. And then if I put negative 1 in for y and I put 2 in for z, I'll get x is equal to positive 1, and I'm done. So it's really an issue of would you rather combine equations 1 and 2 and combine equations 2 and 3 and combine equations 4 and 5, or would you rather do elementary row operations? It just gives us another way that we could solve that system. That is called Gaussian elimination. It was uh, discovered by Carl Frederick Gauss, um, and so it's named after him. Then another mathematician came along afterward and said, hey, if I would just go a few steps further and I would do elementary row operations on these three guys so that this is reduced row echelon form, I am staring at my answer because it's 1x plus 0y plus 0z is equal to 1. So x equals 1. 0y, I'm sorry, 0x plus 1y plus 0z is equal to negative 1. So y equals negative 1. And 0x plus 0y plus 1z is equal to 2. So z equals 2. So Jordan was the mathematician that came behind Gauss and kind of added on to his work. And so that's called Gauss-Jordan elimination. Okay, so I, I still haven't seen a good method for solving a system of three equations with three unknowns. I, I don't really, either one of those is going to take a half a sheet of paper. I'm not really excited about that. Well, your calculator has a handy dandy R, R, E, 
F button. Reduced row echelon form. I can type a matrix in my calculator, hit one button, and it will do this whole process for me and shoot out my answer. Would you like to know how to do that? <laughs> Grab your calculator if you would, please. So, if I am solving a system of equations, me personally, this is the way that I do it. If I have a system of three equations with three unknowns, this is how I do it. All right, so we want to plug in that matrix um, that we were just working with, that system, that augmented matrix that we were just working with. All right, so going back to our original system, what's your augmented matrix? So our original system for example four was the x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. So that was 1, negative 2, 3, 9. And then we had negative x plus 3y plus 0z is 4. So that was negative 1, 3, 0, negative 4. And then 2x minus 5y plus 5z equals 17. So that was 2, negative 5, 5, 17, okay? So you have that right there on your note sheet. Example number four, the augmented matrix, that's the one that we want to put in our calculator. Now, there are two different ways to do this, okay? The first way, I have an actual matrix button on my calculator. You can see it lit up in red right there. So right up above x to the negative 1 in blue is matrix. So I'm going to hit my second button. And then I'm going to hit x to the negative 1. And I'll get this screen. Now, you may not have anything in here. I've got several matrices in here already. You may not have anything in here. That's perfectly fine. Okay? So I'm going to choose to edit. Just like when we put information in our list, right? We choose to edit. I'm going to choose to edit. And I can tell it the size of my matrix. So what's the size of my matrix? Three by four. Uh-huh. So I'm going to tell it three by four. And it'll lay out a three by four matrix for me. And then I can just type in those numbers. All right. So one enter, negative two enter, three enter, nine enter. You get the idea. So go ahead and put all those in if you would, please. Okay, so once I have that in, I'm going to quit out of there. So second, quit to get out of there, go back to my main screen. All right, I'm going to go back to matrix again. And this time I'm going to go over to math because I want it to do something for me, right? I want it to compute something for me. So it's actually really close to the bottom. So it's probably faster to scroll up than to scroll down. But see that guy right there, R-R-E-F. So choose R-R-E-F. And then go back to matrix. And this time we're going to stay right there on names. Because we put our matrix in A, and I want to tell it to do reduced row echelon form of A, so I want the name A. And it does that whole sheet of work that we were doing a second ago that fast. So there's your answer. X equals 1, Y equals negative 1, Z equals 2. Right. So again, what we did was second X to the negative 1. We went over to edit. We chose matrix A. We gave it its order and we gave it the numbers. And then we quit out of that.
Then we went back to matrix. We went over to math, and it was closer to the bottom, so we scrolled up to reduced row echelon form. Now I have to tell it what to take reduced row echelon form of, and so I would go back to matrix and tell it names A. Now, there's another way to do matrices on your calculator as well. I don't care which way you do it. I'm going to show you both, and you can see which one you like better, all right? I would start the um, same way. I would go to math. I would, I'm sorry, not math. I would go to um, matrix, go over to math, and go grab my reduced row echelon form. But instead of entering it in A, instead of typing it in where we did before, there's a way you can type it in on your main screen. And that is alpha zoom. Alpha zoom is a matrix menu. Now, if you have an older calculator and you don't have those optional menus, then you'll have to do it the other way, okay? But for this one, I could tell it, okay, I'm going to go up because right now it's on okay. So if I go up, I can tell it, yeah, three rows is fine. And I'm going to use my arrow key to go over to tell it I want four columns. And once I have what I want, then I'm going to go down here and tell it okay. And it'll put the grid right there on my screen. So instead of me having to go to that matrix menu and put it all in and label it with letters and all that stuff, I can just do it right here on my screen. Now, here's the one thing you got to be careful of. You can't put in a number and hit enter because it thinks you're done. So you have to use your arrow key to move. Okay. So I would do one and then right arrow key and then negative two right arrow key. So try it both ways and see which one you like better. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Uh huh. Um, so scroll up to whatever number you want and hit enter. Mm -hmm. And use your right and left arrow keys to go back and forth between the rows and the columns. And you can see when you hit enter, it gives you the same answer. So if you don't want to have to go to that whole matrix menu, you can do it right here on your main screen. Either way. Okay? All right, so keep your calculator out because we're going to do um, a lot more with it as we um, move forward. All right, but just for review, again, I put the uh, method in your notes that was the one that worked for everybody. <laughs> it doesn't want to cooperate. There it goes. All right, so I put the method in your notes that would work for everybody, because remember that optional menu doesn't work for some people. So this is the step-by-step -step of how we did it from that matrix menu, okay? All right, so that finished off section 11.6, and so now we want to look at 11.7, and that's the sheet that you picked up today. It's an, a longer note sheet just because I've got um, screenshots on there of all the calculator steps that we're going to do, okay? So that way you have it worked out by hand, and then you also have it worked out on the calculator. All right, so... Um, when we left off yesterday, one of the things that we talked about was the identity matrix, all right? And we said the identity matrix um, would have ones in its main diagonal, that's the diagonal that goes from first row, first column, to last row, last column, and it would have zeros everywhere else. We also said it had to be a square matrix. What does square mean? Same number of rows and columns, uh-huh. So one's in the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. We also said that if you multiply a matrix times its identity, you'll get that matrix that you started with. All right, so sure enough, we proved that here in our note sheet. We took a matrix, we multiplied it by its identity, and sure enough, we got exactly what we started with. All right, so 
in order for a matrix to have an inverse, it has to be square. So like we said, two by two, three by three, four by four, same rows and columns. If it does not have an inverse, we call it singular, all right? If it does have an inverse, then it is non-singular. The reason I mention that is because on your calculator, I'm gonna show you how to find the inverse on a calculator. On your calculator, if you put in a matrix that's a square matrix and it doesn't have an inverse, it's going to tell you error singular. So basically, it's telling you this does not have an inverse. You didn't do anything wrong. You just can't find the inverse of this thing. Okay. So when it tells you error singular, that just means that it doesn't have an inverse. It's not invertible. All right. If two matrices are inverses of each other, then when you multiply them in either order, you will get the identity matrix. All right. So if matrix A and matrix B genuinely are inverses of each other, then when I multiply them in either order, A times B or B times A, both times you can see I'm going to get the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. So A and B are inverses of each other because when I multiply them, I get the identity matrix. Okay, but what if they don't give me the inverse? What if they ask me to find the inverse, all right? Um, I will ask you on the test to find the inverse of a two by two by hand. A three by three we'll do on our calculator, but a two by two we will do by hand. So let's look at um, two different ways that you can find the inverse of a two by two, all right? The first way uses elementary row operations. So if you like those elementary row operations, you might like this method better. The other way uses a formula. So if you're more of a formula person, like please give me a formula and let me stick numbers in it, then you'll probably like the second way, okay? But I'll show you both and you can decide which one you like better. So the first thing that we can do if we want to find the inverse is we can write the original matrix on the right-hand side and the identity matrix on the left-hand side, all right? So the original matrix on the right-hand side, the identity matrix on the left-hand side. Then we're going to use elementary row operations to transform that into reduced row echelon form. So on the right-hand side, I'll have identity matrix, reduced row echelon form, and that will create the inverse on, I'm sorry, on the left-hand side, I'll have the identity matrix and that will create the inverse on the right-hand side, okay? So let's look at it. If I have the matrix, one, four, negative one, negative three, and then I put the identity right beside it, I'm gonna use elementary row operations, just like we did a few moments ago, to transform that matrix into reduced row echelon form. 1, 0, 0, 1. The matrix that gets created on the other side of that dotted line is your inverse. So our inverse would be negative 3, negative 4, 1, 1. All right, here's the second way to do that, that if you're more of a formula person, you might like better. All right, we're going to use the exact same matrix. So here's the same one, 1, 4, negative 1, negative 3. And we're going to get the exact same inverse, negative 3, negative 4, 1, 1. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. So here's the formula. The formula for the inverse is going to be 1 over D. We'll talk about D in just a second. And then my matrix gets shuffled a little bit. If you'll notice, A and D switched places. Because in the original matrix, you can see A and D. And so in the jumbled matrix, you can see A and D have switched places. B and C stay where they are. They just change signs. So they change to the opposite of whatever they were. All right. So look at our matrix. For our matrix, we're going to switch the 1 and the negative 3. So there it is right there. We switched 1 and negative 3. We're going to leave negative 1 and 4 where they are. We're just going to change their signs. So negative 1 becomes positive, and positive 4 becomes negative. So there's our jumbled matrix. Now the only other thing we need to do is multiply that by 1 over D. What's D? 
Well, D is AD minus BC. It's just the main diagonal minus the alternate diagonal. So for us, it would be 1 times negative 3. So 1 times negative 3 minus 4 times negative 1. Minus 4 times negative 1. So that would give us negative 3 plus 4 or 1. So it's 1 over the D value times the jumbled matrix. Okay? So again, whichever one you like better, two different ways of doing the same thing, doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay, why would I ever need to know how to find the inverse of a matrix? Again, we're looking at ways of solving systems of equations, right? Here is yet another way that you can use matrices to solve a system of equations. All right, I can use the inverse. So let's say that I have a matrix times some unknown matrix is equal to another one. And I'm trying to solve for X. I'm going to call this matrix A and this matrix B. Okay, so I've got AX is equal to B. Normally, when we're trying to get rid of like multiplying by 2, we do the inverse. We divide by 2, right? If we're trying to get rid of adding 5, we do the inverse. We subtract 5, right? So if I want to get rid of A, I'm going to use its inverse. What did we say happens if you multiply two inverses, like a matrix times its inverse? What do you get? The identity, yes. So when I multiply the inverse times A, I'm going to get the identity. And what's identity times any matrix? That matrix. So that would give me X by itself, which is what I want. So, of course, what I do to one side, I do to the other side. So if I multiplied the left side by the inverse of A, I got to multiply the right side. So I'm going to do the inverse of A times B, and that will be my answer. So to put it simply, step number one, find the inverse of A. And then step number two, multiply the inverse of A times B. Now, it has to be in that order. A times B is not the same thing as B times A. If you don't multiply it in that order, you will not get the right answer. Okay, so let's try this example that they gave us. All right, so first off, I need to find the inverse of A. So for our formula, remember it's 1 over D, and then we have the jumbled matrix. So I'm going to switch negative 2 and 6, so they just swapped places. And I'm going to leave 3 and negative 5 where they are. I'm just going to change their signs to the opposite. All right, then for the D value, by the way, that stands for determinant. For the D value, I'm going to do negative 2 times 6 minus 3 times negative 5. So negative 2 times 6 is negative 12, minus 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. So minus a negative 15 would be plus 15. So our D value, our determinant, is 3. So we'll put that 3. So 1 over D times the jumbled matrix. Now we just have scalar multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by 1 third. So 1 third times 6 is 2. 1 third times 5. 1 third times negative 3 and then 1 third times negative 2, that would be my inverse. So step number one is find the inverse, and that gave me some extra practice with finding the inverse of a 2 by 2. Okay? All right, then I'm supposed to multiply that inverse times matrix B. Okay, well, let's take that inverse we just got right there, and let's multiply it times matrix B from our original problem. And then it's just normal matrix multiplication to give us our answer. And just to show you that it really did work, I came down here and I put the answer that we got into the equation and multiplied it. And sure enough, those two matrices multiplied together did give us matrix B. Okay. So that is yet another way that we can solve systems. All right, now, let's be honest. If I'm solving a system of two equations with two unknowns, is that the way I'm going to do it? No, I'm going to do elimination. That's my favorite method. You can do graphing, elimination, substitution, or you could do this if you want to. All right. If I wanted to solve a system of three equations with three unknowns using inverses, I am not finding the inverse of a three by three by hand. We would do that on the calculator. All right. So again, for your um, calculator, here's the three by three that I want you to put in, and you can put it in either way. I've got both methods up here for you. So here's the three by three that I want you to put in. 
So go ahead and start typing that in either way that you like. So it's 231 331 and 241. So again, it's a three by three. And so I'm gonna put my numbers in using my arrow key, not my enter button. All right, so there's our matrix. And then here is your inverse button right here your x to the negative one you can see it lit up in red there your x to the negative one is your inverse button so when i hit enter there's my inverse now that also works on a two by two but we're doing the two by two by hand we're not doing anything larger than a two by two by hand all right if instead you like the other method better you would have gone to second matrix you would have gone over to edit. You would have told it that it's a three by three and then put those numbers in. All right, and then I'm gonna quit out of that and go back to my main screen. All right, so then I'll go back to matrix and I will choose matrix A. I just need its name, right? And then again, I'll hit that inverse button. And you can see I get the exact same answer. So either way you like better, doesn't make any difference which way you do it, whichever you prefer is perfectly fine. But here's both of those ways that we just did um, there as an example for you. All right. Why would I want to find the inverse of three by three? Because you can do the exact same thing with the three by three that you just did with your two by two. You can solve a system of three equations with three unknowns using inverses. So I could go through, and again, it's the same two steps. Find the inverse. We just did that on the calculator. We took matrix A. That is the inverse we just found on our calculator a second ago. So I would take the inverse of A and I would multiply it by matrix B and that would give me my solution. Now, let's be honest. If I'm solving a system of three equations with three unknowns, is this the way I'm doing it? No, because if I've already taken the time to type matrix A into my calculator, all I have to do is just hit the happy RREF and then the matrix, right? So why would I go through all the extra steps? So. It's just nice to know that, that we have options, that there are all these different ways that we can do it. Now, on WebAssign, it will say, solve this system of three equations with three unknowns using inverses. They mean for you to do it this way. You are welcome to do it this way, but you're also welcome to hit the RREF button if you want to. Because on the test, it says, solve the system of three equations with three unknowns any way that you want to. So you can go back to equations one and two, equations two and three, create equations four and five, and back substitute. Or you can do this, or you can hit the happy, happy little RREF button because it is on the calculator portion of the test. Okay, so your call, whatever you want to do. Okay, if you would put these four matrices in your calculator, please. So, and they're on your note sheet as well. So if you'd rather use your note sheet instead of having to look up back and forth at the screen, that's fine. But if you would put in matrix A, matrix B, matrix D, and matrix E, please.
So you are welcome to work at your own pace, but if you want me to do it with you, I'm happy to. So I am going to do second x to the negative one to get to my matrix menu. I'm gonna go over to edit and I'm gonna choose matrix A. I'm gonna tell it I want a two by two. And then I'm gonna put in the numbers there on my sheet. So three, two, one, four. Quit out of that, and then I would go back to matrix again, go over to edit again, and then I would go down to matrix B, and I would put in that two by three that's on your notes, which is this guy right here, and the same thing with D and E. So I'll give you a second to finish putting those in, and then we'll do some things with them. All right, so I'm going to do second matrix to go get the name for matrix A. So right there in that first column, I'm going to choose A, and it puts A on my screen, right? I want to add matrix A and B, all right? So I'm going to say matrix A plus, and then I'll go back to matrix again, and I'll choose B. Can I add A and B? No, why not? They don't have the same dimensions. So look what happens if I do that on my calculator. It not only tells me it's wrong, but it tells me why. It says your dimensions don't match. You can't do this. Okay. So if you happen to forget, it'll remind you. You can't combine them if they don't have the exact same order. All right. Would I be able to add A and D? Yeah, because they have the same order, right? All right. So let's do that. I'm going to go get matrix A. And then I'm going to add to that matrix B. And then it has no trouble at all doing that for me. All right. We could also subtract them. Now, something that will save you a little bit of time is if you have to do the same problem but just change one little thing about it, I'm going to scroll up to it and hit enter and it'll retype it for me. And then I can just come in here and put a subtraction sign. So. That might save you a little bit of time and energy. All right, would I be able to multiply these? What has to be true for me to be able to multiply? Yeah, so the inside order has to be the same. The number of columns in the first has to be the same as the number of rows in the second. So are the inside numbers the same for these? Yeah, it's a two by two and a two by two, right? So absolutely, I could multiply those and my calculator can do it that quickly. All right, would I be able to multiply A times B? We said that we couldn't add them, but could I multiply A times B? Are the inside numbers the same? Yeah, they're both twos, right? So let's do that. Let's take matrix A and let's multiply it by matrix B. And no problem at all doing that, right? All right. What if we went in the reverse order? What if we did matrix B times matrix A? Are we going to be able to do that? Why no? Yeah, so if matrix B comes first, the inside numbers are three and two. So again, what's my calculator going to do? It's going to give me an error message very specific that says, again, your dimensions aren't right. You can't multiply when the inside numbers aren't the same. Your dimensions don't match up. Okay? So again, we saw that A times B is not the same thing as B times A. All right, we also can do scalar multiplication on here. So I'm going to double matrix B. So I'm just going to do 2 and then go grab matrix B. 
<clears throat> so that's scalar multiplication. Would there be any of these that I could find an inverse for? How do I know if I can find an inverse? Yeah, it's got to be squared, right? Same number of rows and columns. So I could find the inverse of A. So let's do that. I know that we did it earlier today, but just for extra practice, I'm going to grab matrix A, and then I'm going to do the inverse. And by the way, if you don't like decimal answers and you prefer fractions, over here under math, you can change any answer to a fraction or change a fraction back to a decimal. So, like, my answer is in decimal right now. So, if I choose that very first button right there, it'll take my answer and change it to fractions instead. So, whichever way you like better. All right, and then also, one last practice with that REF thing that we were doing, the way to solve a system of equations. So, if I go to E, E would represent a system of three equations with three unknowns, right? So if I go to E, and I, that's the one that I want to do RREF, right? So in front of E, I want to put the RREF. I should have typed the RREF first, but um, so I'll just do it from scratch. So we're going to go over to math, and we're going to go up to reduce row echelon form, and then I'm going to go back and choose matrix E. And again, if you don't like the decimals, you can switch it to a fraction, either way you want to go.